The universe you perceive is a reflection of your consciousness collapsing the quantum field into form. Dr. Amit Goswami, you believe you are seeing the world as it is. Believe that your eyes capture reality. May your thoughts correctly interpret what is before you. But what if I told you that is none of this real? Not in the superficial philosophical sense, not as a play on words, but in a vibrational way, in a quantum way, silently. There is an invisible field, a space where everything you call matter, time, space, is nothing more than floating information, waiting to be organized by something even more invisible, your conscience. And I'm not talking about your everyday consciousness, which thinks, decides, and doubts. I speak of a quantum consciousness, a vibration that exists before your identity and that projects the illusion you call the world. Everything you see, feel, touch is, in fact, a vibrational construct, a reflection of the way your consciousness collapses the field into shapes, sounds, and stories. What we call reality is not what exists. It's just what we got perceived within what exists. And everything we don't understand remains invisible, but present. Quantum physics has suspected this for decades. Experiments like the double-slit experiment show that matter only behaves like a particle when observed. When there is no... It is just wave, pure potential, nothing solid. But what is this observation? Who is really watching? Is it your mind? Or is it something much deeper? Your vibrational consciousness, which exists beyond the brain, beyond the body. And if so, what you call reality is not absolute. It is just one frequency among infinite ones that could manifest. You are stuck in this frequency because you have learned to always collapse the same possibilities. But the field has no limits. Only your perception has it. Today, we'll explore how quantum consciousness creates the illusion of reality you see. And how, silently, it is possible to begin to see beyond the projection. Not as an escape, but as a souvenir. Because in the end, maybe true reality doesn't need to be created. She just needs to be remembered. I remember exactly the moment I realized that I had never seen reality. I was standing in an empty station, late on a silent afternoon. People hurried past, announcements sounded automatic, and the light seemed ordinary. But for a brief moment, something in me stopped. I stopped naming things. I stopped trying to interpret what I saw. I just looked. And what I saw was not a train, nor people, nor buildings. We, a vibrating field. As if behind everything I called the world, there were only frequencies, waiting to be organized by my consciousness. I don't know how long I stayed there. In fact, time no longer existed there. And in that instant, something became clear. Reality wasn't out there. She was being projected from my perception. This experience took me apart. Because until then, I believed that I saw the world as it was, but I realized that I only saw what my conscience allowed me to see, and that most of reality remained invisible, silent, waiting to be recognized. Maybe you felt something similar, when, for a moment, everything seemed strange, as if the world lost its consistency, as if floating in a silent void, and you were just a passing observer. It's not crazy. It's quantum consciousness trying to remind you where everything really comes from. And when that happens, something inside you changes. The frantic search for answers subsides. Fear of the future loses strength. And the past stops being a burden because you realize that it too is just a vibrational reflection. If this story touched something inside you, if you feel that there is something behind what the eyes show, then maybe this is your calling. Here in Paths of Light, we are not looking for easy answers. We seek questions that silence the mind and awaken consciousness. If you feel this is the path for you, sign up. Let your vibration be present. Because maybe the field was already waiting for you. 
When you begin to realize that reality is not something fixed, but a field in constant vibrational collapse, a new type of question arises. No more. How does the world work? But, who is collapsing the world now? Because all you see is not the field itself. It is the form that the field assumes before your consciousness. Quantum physics tries to describe this mathematically. We talk about the observer, about the wave that becomes a particle, about the collapse of the wave function. But ancient traditions spoke of it differently. In Vedanta, the visible world is said to be Maya, an illusion constructed by perception. In Taoism, manifest reality is just a dance of the Tao, impermanent, fluid, without fixed form. And in the silence of Zen, it is taught. The world only exists as you interpret it. In silence, it disappears. So the essential question arises. If everything is vibrational projection, who are you without the projection? Without the story you tell yourself? Without the names you give to things? Without the certainties that keep your world standing? The instant these layers cease, however briefly, the field appears bare. No forms, no concepts, just pure vibration, waiting for a new form. First, you realize that you don't see the world. You project the world. Then you realize that it is not your thoughts. You are the one observing the thoughts creating the world. And finally, it realizes that the observer himself is also transitory. What remains then? A silence that observes without needing to define. A field that vibrates without needing to collapse. Perhaps for this reason, great masters sought profound silence. Not to escape the world, but to cease the projection that the world sustains. Because it is only in the silence of consciousness that illusion begins to dissolve. And when that happens, reality doesn't disappear. She becomes light, like a dream you know you're dreaming. But you can still choose to live with more freedom. If you look closely, you will see that different cultures, in distant times and places, have spoken of the same thing, with different names, with distinct symbols, but pointing to the same silent void where everything is born. In India, the concept of Maya describes the world as a temporary illusion created by the mind, but not an illusion in the negative sense. An illusion in the sense that everything is impermanent, vibrational, transitory. In Buddhism, the primordial void is called shunyatait, is not absence, but pure potential, where everything can manifest and disappear effortlessly. In Jewish mysticism, the A sofa represents the formless infinity before the creation of perceptible reality. And in Sufism, Rumi said, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a single drop. The illusion would be to believe that you are separate from the ocean. And then, centuries later, quantum science began to speak in terms like superposition of states, unified field, wave function collapse. David Bohm, unlike many scientists, did not see reality as fragmented. He was talking about an implicate order, where everything is connected behind the separate appearance of things. According to Bohm, what we perceive as the solid and concrete world is only a superficial manifestation of much deeper and more silent patterns. But there is something that does not appear in the books. Something that many masters have whispered, but few have actually heard. Reality doesn't change when you understand it intellectually. It only changes when you silence the need to interpret it. The field does not respond to your knowledge, responds to your silent vibration. That's why so many seekers travel the entire world in search of the truth, and they only find it when they stop looking. Because while the mind seeks answers, true consciousness just observes. And in this observation, without the desire to control, the field reorganizes itself. Just as light only behaves as a particle when someone observes it, your life only behaves like a drama when you insist on interpreting it as such. In silence, 
it becomes a field again. Pure potential. Freedom in vibrational state. But there is something that remains hidden, even after all this. Even when we know that reality is a vibrational projection, even when we accept that the external world is not solid in itself, the question remains, why do we keep collapsing into the same reality, day after day? Why, if the field is infinite, do we always choose the same frequencies? Why, if consciousness can create new possibilities, are we stuck with the old ones? Few people talk about it. The answer does not lie in conscious desire. It is in deeper layers of vibration. Layers that the mind cannot reach, but that silently shape what you call life. It's as if there are ancient patterns vibrating in the background of the field. Unrecognized memories. Frequencies inherited from past experiences, perhaps from other lives, perhaps from forgotten fragments of your own journey. These vibrations do not obey your current will. They obey the silent field where your consciousness is collapsing reality now. Then another question arises. How to change the vibration without fighting it? How do we access these deeper layers, where choices are not mental, but vibrational? The answer does not lie in external techniques. It is in ceasing the internal movement. Silence is not to escape reality, but to see the field before it takes shape. Because in silence, you touch the space where everything is still possible, and nothing is mandatory. Maybe that's why the Master said, what you seek is already here. But while you seek, you cannot see. It is in this space between wanting and ceasing that true transformation happens, not by effort, but by vibration. After that silent afternoon at the train station, something inside me is not the same again. There were no miracles. The bills kept coming. The challenges of everyday life have not disappeared. But I was no longer the same person who faced them. Because now I knew that what I called a problem was actually a frequency that I was collapsing into without realizing it. Over time, I noticed subtle but profound changes. The anxieties that had once seemed urgent began to dissolve into silence. The questions that tormented me began to lose strength. And the repetitive situations, which before seemed like traps of fate, were revealed as unconscious projections of my vibration. And the most surprising thing was realizing that there was no need to force external changes. All I had to do was change the quality of my silence. All that was needed was to stop the incessant desire to interpret everything. In psychology, we would say this is presence. In spirituality, we would say it is vibrational alignment. In quantum physics, perhaps it is consciousness collapsing different states of the field. But deep down, the name doesn't matter. What matters is the lightness that arises when you realize that you no longer need to carry reality as a weight. You can just let it flow as it is. No resistance. Without attachment. At that moment, I realized that everything I saw was just a projection. But at the same time, it was beautiful. Because even though it is an illusion, reality has its own poetry. Your own silent dance. And maybe true awakening isn't about denying the world. But learn to inhabit it with lightness. Like someone who knows they are dreaming, but chooses to dance in the dream. When you recognize this, the field responds. Not because you asked, but because your silent vibration allowed it. And this permission is what sets you free. And now, perhaps an unspoken question remains. How to live this without turning it into just another theory? How to inhabit this invisible field? Without effort. Without escape. There is no external ritual. There is no rigid step-by-step -step guide. But there is a silent, simple, almost invisible practice. It happens when you stop for a moment and ask yourself, what am I projecting right now? What frequency am I collapsing into right now without realizing it? And when asking this question, don't look for an immediate answer. Just watch, observe your surroundings. Observe what your mind wants to interpret. Observe what your heart wants to feel. And after observing, leave everything silent. 
don't fight what you see. Don't try to force another reality. Just recognize that behind all of this, there is a pure potential field, waiting for your consciousness to cease projection. This practice does not last for hours. It can happen in a few seconds, in the silence before a choice, in the void between one breath and another, the moment you stop trying to understand and just see. In this space, the field reorganizes reality, not by control, but by vibrational coherence. The ancient masters said that it is in this silence that true freedom resides. It's not the freedom to have whatever you want. It is the freedom of not needing reality to be different to be at peace. And paradoxically, it is in this peace that new possibilities arise. Because when you stop collapsing into the same vibrational states over and over, the field can finally show something new, something that was already there, but you didn't see it. That's the practice, enough silence for the field to show another side of reality. Not always easier, but always more true. Perhaps the most important thing is what remained silent, because no matter how much we talk about the quantum field, about consciousness or about illusion, none of this replaces the silent experience of simply see, see without interpreting, see without wanting, see without running away. When you look at reality and stop naming it, the field begins to reveal something that was hidden. She was never fixed. It was never absolute. It was always vibration, waiting for your consciousness to touch. So I leave you with a question that doesn't require an immediate answer. What if everything you call real is just the part of the field you had the courage to observe? What else would be there, waiting for your silence? Perhaps your journey will continue along other paths. Maybe it will remain silent for a while. If you feel there is more to see, there are two paths before you now. But don't choose out of curiosity. Choose because of the vibration that calls you.